increased will be another half hour, apparently. Uh, traffic or something. I mean, you'd think he could just pray for there to be nobody else on the road, but uh, apparently it doesn't work like that. <laughs> I've heard back from Matthews. Uh, he's giving us an extension. How long? A month. He's so nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he is. Uh, are you all right, Rach? Uh, he said it was the least he could do um, under the circumstances. Well, I don't know about that. He's a university lecturer. I'm sure he could have found some way to do less. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, no. Um, well, considering how much we've each got done already, we can probably split up the rest between us and uh, start collating it all by, I don't know, let's say next Monday? Yeah, I suppose that would be doable. Sure. Great. Great. So, uh, I'll do the pride, you guys can do the prejudice. <laughs> What I mean is, I've got most of my stuff, you know, the Jane and Bingley bits in the bag, and, well, I've got no rugby matches coming up, so easily have time for the rest. Um, and Rach, you've got the bits with Darcy and Bingley's sister, and uh, Tony, since you've taken on the big one, you know, with Lizzie and Darcy, I think of Rach and me can maybe divvy up the Lydia and Wickham sections between us. I don't want to lump you with too much. Who, hey, me? No, not at all. It's not like I'm dealing with anything else right now. No, really, it's fine. I mean, Darcy and Elizabeth, really, they're so much easier to talk about because they're right there, you know? It'd take you two forever to come through the book for every mention of Wickham and Lydia. I'll help out. Oh, all right, if you're sure, I'm sure. You're a sweetheart, but I'm sure. Right, uh, yeah. Do you reckon there's anything that could give us like a head start? Yeah, maybe. Chris has some... There might be some notes in Chris's room. I hope they haven't taken them away. Oh, no, I'm sure they won't have done that. They won't have. It's halls. They're not exactly known for being organised. I'll pop by tomorrow. Take a look. Great. Well, great. You know, to tell the truth, I'm not even sure I can remember where his room was. Uh, is, was, uh, well, I mean, he only invited me over the once, uh, back in term two? Yeah, yeah, term two it was. It was during the Shakespeare module. <laughs> of course, Chris would be the lad who brought the complete works of Shakespeare to uni with him. I mean, I barely knew him at the time, of course, but seeing those, what is it, 35, 40 books all lined up on his shelf in alphabetical order, <laughs> weren't surprised in the least. Instincts, I guess. Tells you a lot about a person. If they're reliable, why is it? Mine always have been. It's then what told me to ask Chris about the plays what don't fit into one or the other category. And you know what? I, I could have looked it up. I, I could have used the internet instead of asking Chris, but every day since, I, I'm glad I didn't. I bet he's up there now, looking down at us, laughing his ass off, but I mean, I've never seen someone go this far just to avoid a deadline before. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't remember where his room was. I have to get there and that. He never invited me over again, even after we all got started together. That's strange. Uh, not really. I, I might have broken something while I was in there. They play Unicorn? Yeah. That was you? Yeah. He told me that was a present from his nephew. He told me that too. <laughs> but after I knocked it over. After. I felt terrible. Of course I did. I, 
I mean, he practically shoved Pericles into my hands and rushed me out of there like he was a firefighter saving me from a burning building. I barely got a chance to thank him. Well, now it's my turn to thank you. Thank me? That thing was hideous. You can tell it was made by a four-year-old. I felt sorry for him, of course. It was clearly precious to him, but... I mean, you saw that thing, right? It looked like something you'd see in the toilet after eating a takeaway you'd left in the fridge for two weeks. <laughs> I, I see what you mean. Well, uh, I guess you're welcome then. You know, uh, happy to be us. <laughs> what is it, Rach? Uh, Rachel? Well, you clearly like that clay unicorn a lot but more the than... just... just shut up. Oh, Rach, I'm sorry, Rach. Rachel. I didn't you're you're making this. jokes. That clay unicorn, Chris's nephew gave it to him because he loves... He loved Chris that much and you broke it. And you're making fun of it. And both of you are making a bloody joke out of it. You know that's not how I meant it. At all. Yeah, we're, we're just trying to... Trying to what? We're coping. It's how we're coping. Coping? You're coping? Well, it must be fucking nice. Martin, don't bother. It's no use, trust me, I've known her longer than you, and even if you go over there and apologise on your knees, all you'll achieve is covering that rented sea in grass stains. I'm surprised you're holding it together so well. I, I mean, it's all I can do to keep my hands from shaking. I'm, I only knew him since January, and, and you, you grew up with him, you, what are you laughing at? But I say, I didn't grow up with Chris. She did. Oh. 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 Yeah. Bloody hell. Yeah. Uh, but you and him, you act, you, you uh, acted like, You've known each other your whole lives. Are you single, Martin? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Of course that's not why I'm asking. Oh, I did my time. What I meant was, if you've never had a girlfriend, you might know what it's like when you just click with someone. Even if you've never spoken to them before, they look at you from across the room and it's like they can see past your eyes and into your soul. Ever felt like that with anyone, Martin? Mm. Pity. Well, don't worry, <laughs> it's, it's bound to happen soon enough. Anyway, you might have guessed that's how it was for me and Chris. It's just before Freshers' Week started, I moved in a little earlier than most. Not sure why, I just felt like getting a Head start on the university experience. Came down like a Wednesday or a Thursday or something. You know, over the weekend, the rest of them trickled in. Just sat in my room and watched it all. Just seen it out again. The view from my window. If you look down and to the left, you can see all the cars parked in front of the building. Well, it's two floors up. It's a rather good vantage point. It's from there from my window that I saw him for the first time, getting out of his parents' car. I remember, I remember his jumper. It was orange, so bright, I swear you could have seen it from 10 floors up. <laughs> Shit, you could probably see it from space. I remember he was getting a suitcase out of the boot of his parents' car and as he turned, he just happened to look up right at me, right where I was. And he smiled. That smile of his, I didn't just see this smile that day. I felt it. I felt his warmth spreading through me, starting in my chest, making its way into my blood, working its way down, all the way down to my, my toes and fingertips. I'm sure I smiled too. How could I not? In that moment, that infinitely brief moment, I felt more loved than I'd ever felt before. And I didn't even know his name. It was ridiculous. And again, I am a ridiculous man. So, as soon as I saw him head into the building, I dashed to the front door and waited for him to knock. 
I imagine the moment. He'd knock. I'd throw open the door, introduce myself with some witty line that I'd surely come up with in the moment. And he'd laugh. And I'd laugh. And I'd take his hand and show him to his room. And then I heard voices in the corridor, and that snapped me right back to reality. He was going into the flat next door, the one across the landing. So I never got my fantasy moment. It wasn't until a few days later when we really got to talk, it? it was in the cafeteria and there oh, was this... Oh, the spotted dick, right? Well, uh, I thought I hadn't... Oh, no, it, it, it was Chris told me this one, actually. Uh, your first date. Really? <laughs> he did? What, what, what did he say about it? Uh, well, uh, he said a, a lot of the same stuff you did. Um, uh, not the same in, exactly, you know, but... Um, well, the way he felt about... You like, I could tell he really cared. <laughs> I always, always wanted to ask him about that day. Someday you're going to have to tell me everything he said to you. Everything, all right. Of course, of course. You know, he's really a decent guy. You were too hard on him. I'm sorry I snapped at you. You were just trying to lighten the mood a bit. I'm going to work harder at keeping my feelings to myself. The last thing I want is to pitch a bloody fit in the church when everyone else is trying to grieve. Well, that's progress, at least. 
Word of advice, though, starting off with the apology tends to be a bare olive branch to go down than some four-year-old's fashion choices. Look, I know how hard today is for you. It's hard for me, too. I know, I know, but him? I mean, we only met Chris a few months ago. So what? He shouldn't feel sad about it. He should be doing just fine, because I've only known... I only knew Chris for, what, eight months, so I guess I should Shut be doing... Shut up. You know that's not what I meant. Then what did you mean? Seriously, you think that because Martin didn't know Chris as well as the rest of us, or didn't know him for as long, that he doesn't deserve to mourn it? You think he doesn't belong here, is that it? Well, I've been watching him all morning, and he clearly agrees with you. Watching him try and find Chris's mum to offer his condolences, it was almost painful. He started walking towards her, then just stopped, looking like a frightened little puppy trying to climb the stairs for the first time. Because he couldn't be sure he was actually Chris's mum, and not just an aunt or a friend of the family or something. Think about it. He's only known Chris since the start of last term, so he hasn't got the first clue what his parents look like. Between Chris's family and all your friends from back home, he hardly knows who anybody is. They don't know it. And he definitely doesn't think he deserves to be here. He feels lost, out of place, and one of the few people he actually does know basically just told him to piss off. So I'd say he's doing pretty bloody far from fine. That's said. His comment about the clay unicorn was completely out of line. I mean, how insensitive and bloody-minded do you have to be to call a four-year-old's artwork hideous? I'm sure he didn't mean it. You know, you're right. He really does look like a puppy. Yes, right? Yeah, he does. He's just got one of those faces. Yeah. Hey, um, could you help me with something? Of course. Anything? After I went off, I decided to practice my eulogy. You are given the eulogy? Chris's folks asked me to. They said he would have wanted his best friend to speak. Well, that's nice of them. I need to be able to get all the way through it. I can't just break down in front of everyone, so I wanted to practice it once or twice before I actually have to give it. Would you help me? Give me any tips? Sure. Go on, let's hear it. Okay. Here it is. We're here today to remember Christopher Andrew Darnell, my best friend, the person who mattered more to me than anyone or anything else in the world. Chris and I... Hey, look, I, 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 I wasn't eavesdropping. I just came by because I wanted say it. No, I, I'm sorry about just now. I, I shouldn't have... It's fine. It's okay. I'm really sorry. It's okay. Right. Oh, well, I, I guess I'll be off then. I'll see you guys in a bit. Hang on. Martin. I was just showing Tony my eulogy for Chris. Having a run through so I don't screw it up later. Do you want to maybe sit and have a listen? Let me know what you think of it. Yeah, uh, sure thing, Paige. I'd be glad to. Well, go on then. I wasn't that far through, I'll just start it over. All right. Okay then. We're here today to remember Christopher Andrew Darnell, my best friend, the person who mattered more to me than anyone or anything else in the world. <clears throat> Chris and I grew up together. Most of you know that. We met at the exams to get into secondary school. My pen ran out of ink on the second page, and when I raised my hand to ask for a new one, the teacher said, no questions. Being me, I hadn't brought a spare, so I was in deep trouble. But then a hand appeared from one side and dropped a pen on my desk with a little note wrapped around it that said, don't look at me or say anything. They'll think we're cheating. I did what the note said, and. I ended up doing all right on the test. Good enough to get in, actually. And on the way out, I finally got a good look at the boy who'd saved my neck. 
He was neat, of course, even back then. Shirt tucked into his trousers and a sky blue tie that matched his socks. I remember my first thought. His mum must be a bloody nightmare if that's how she's made him dress. I'm going to pause for a chuckle there. And just then, he took off the tie, stuffed it into his pocket, gave me a cheeky little grin and said, Mummy said the tie was too much. We started chatting, getting to know each other, and found out we lived on the same road. So, of course, that's how our friendship started. Good start? Yeah, yeah, solid. But you didn't come here today to hear my life story, or even Chris's. You came because, just like how Chris saved me in that exam, there was a time he saved everyone here, in some way or another. He lent Will a blazer and a tie for his first date with Emma, back in Lower Sick, then look at them now, they're still together. He proofread Seb's Macbeth, Macbeth essay the night before it was due, and he promised to teach me how to waltz and help me pick out a dress for the hockey team's dance social next week. He was always giving. That's why I loved him. That's why we all loved him. Oh, uh, that's good. Have either of you got a pen? Oh, uh, yeah, I think I've got one, yeah. Great. his eyes for hours on end, 
trying to absorb every last drop of my best friend's love before it was gone forever. But of course, that's not what I did. Nah, what I did was I told her about this hockey team social where all the girls would be wearing nice dresses and doing all sorts of fancy dances, the kind that a grammar school in Manchester just doesn't prepare you for. And he smiled and said, and I think this is word for word, Rachel Lee Michaels, the day I turned down a chance to teach someone how to waltz, take me out the back and shoot me between the eyes, because I've either been replaced by some alien imposter or I've completely given up on life. <laughs> yeah, I'll pause for a chuckle there too. <laughs> and we laughed and settled on a day for my first lesson. And when I got up to leave, he hugged me. It wasn't an especially long hug, or a tight one. In fact, it didn't feel special at all at the time. But looking back, while I was wrapped in that hug, I felt more love than I could put into words. Because my best friend, Chris Darnell, saw the light in everything. He saw it in each of us and gave us some of his own light to keep it glowing bright and strong. So I'm going to spend the rest of my life looking for the light in everything and everyone. We all should. Because Chris lit up all of our lives so much that he deserves for his legacy to be us making the world a brighter place. Thank you. But Rage, that was, that was beautiful. There won't be a dry eye in the house. You really think so? I do. That was just lovely. Really lovely. Thanks, Martin. What did you think, Tony? Take out the tightrope line. It's rather redundant, and it's cliché. Oh, uh, okay then. Um, Martin, can I borrow that pen again? Yeah, of course. Rach, it's a good eulogy. Thanks, Tony. Um, Martin, I just wanted to say I'm sorry for snapping at you earlier. I'm going through a lot today, and uh, I'm just, it wasn't fair of me to take it out on you. I'm sad, of course, and I'm confused, and I'm angry, but it's not you I'm angry at, it's just, I don't know, the world. Life, I guess. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm going to work harder at pushing my feelings down, keeping them under control. I don't want to make a whole bloody scene and ruin the day. I'll find ways to take my mind off it. Oh, no. I mean, you don't have to do that. Sometimes letting your feelings out can, you know, help you deal with them. But like having a good cry, or uh, I knew this one lad who would find a big open space and just shout. You know, put it all out in the open. That way he wasn't bottling anything up. Look, Martin, that sounds fun and all, but the church is right over there. I'm not just going to scream my head off. Well, it doesn't have to be that then. Just anything that can help you get this stuff off your chest. Because until you do, it's just going to hurt. I know, maybe you could try just, going and... Just Stop! Okay? This isn't about me. Once the service starts, I have to go in there and support Chris's family on one of the hardest days that they'll ever have. Which, you know, is also one of the hardest days I'll ever have. I've got a eulogy to give without collapsing into a bloody sobbing heap. So that means keeping it together and clamping down on any feelings that could bubble over and screw everything up. Because there are more important things today. Do you get that? I do, but it's really Martin! Hard. Leave it. <sighs> so, did you guys have any more thoughts about the eulogy? Well, it did go on a little long. You do know dissertations not till third year, right? 
Oh, is it really? Thanks a lot for the reminder. I'll go and note it down in my planner. Oh, no need for that. I'm sure Matthews will remind you. After all, he's so nice. Isn't he so, so nice? Tony, I don't know what's gone into you, but if you don't shut up, I swear um, I'll... Uh, you know what? I was thinking it over and I reckon you're right, Rach. Uh, maybe we shouldn't all be feeling so sad, you know, about Chris. What? Yeah. I, I mean, if, if he hadn't been so careless, we wouldn't all be in this mess. It, uh, he's left us to pick up the slack on the Pride and Prejudice assignment. Uh, he promised to teach you to dance and, and now he can't do that. It was bloody stupid. You know? Stop. Stop it. If, if he'd just paid more attention, looked around him, seen that car before it mounted the curb, well, none of this would be happening. You wouldn't have lost your best friend. You wouldn't have lost your boyfriend. The, this pain, this grief, the, the only reason we're feeling it is because he... Chris was a careless fucking idiot. <laughs> there, there, Rach, let it work. Don't you fucking touch me! <laughs> oh, oh, Rach, I'm... <laughs> Enough to gain some 
Admiring looks from some passers-by. Less the large, you twat. All right, all right. Next one isn't about size. Got it. We're taking requests now, I see. Not drinking straws, no. Sunflower stems, no. Greco-Roman Corinthian columns. I've got it. Your legs are like really, really, really short sticks. Because, because that. Standing for an hour and a half, I believe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So I sent it to the service in his little three piece suit. Oh, yeah? You were right. It does look like something I'd wear. See, I told you. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get smug. Tell you though, I was almost tempted just to reach down and pluck that pocket square right out of his, well, pocket. What for? Don't you have like 40 back in your flat? Seven? And none of them are eggshell. I swear you've got a white one. White and eggshell are not the... Oh, never mind. Let's see. I've got a red, charcoal, sky blue, azure, more white like you said, and black and white hands tooth. I mean it's get more. You need more than that? Well, 40 years to go. Anyway, if you think mine's a lot, you clearly haven't seen Chris's collection. Puts mine to shame. He's got an oak blue one and a green paisley that I've had my eye on for months now. Well, I suppose he had. Maybe I'll get them now that he... Shit. Sorry, Rachel. chap. I wasn't thinking. It's alright. So, 
The call move of the waltz is called a box step. It goes like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You see? Just like that. Except because you're following, you're going to go back when I go forwards, left when I go right, and so on. And you'll use a foot that's opposite to my feet. Not as complicated as I'm making it sound. Trust me, just follow my feet. You got that? For you, it'll be back, left together, forward, right together. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, sure. All right. Should we give it a try? Now, Rich, I think you might have taken me a bit too literally when I said this was a slow dance. You see, you are allowed to move at a normal Tony, pace. there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What is it? I saw you during my eulogy. What do you mean? You looked upset, unhappy. And don't say how it's a funeral and we're all unhappy. That's not what I meant. It was more like, I don't know. It just looked like you wanted to be anywhere but there. Oh. Oh, that, yeah, well, I, uh, I got a text just before you started speaking. My dad, you know where it can oh, be. Stop a... it. I know you, Tony. We may not have been friends that long, but I can tell when you're full of it. You were upset during my eulogy. You got all critical when I read it to you and Martin earlier too. So what's the matter? Just, just leave it, Rachel. Believe me, you don't want to know. I do. You don't. Yes, Tony, I do. Look, Chris, Chris is gone. We can't go to him without problems anymore. We have to be there for each other. So let me be here for you. And tell me what's wrong. You want to know. You have to know. Well, fine. Here goes. None of Chris's family knew who I was. What do you mean? They all knew your name. I even heard his dad saying Chris had told them about you. But none of Chris's family knew who I was. Unless Chris had suddenly come out to them in the last two months without telling me no. They all thought I was just another friend, just a mate from uni, someone who he lived on the same floor as and he shared a few classes with. I'm sorry about that. But what's that got to do with my eulogy? Well, all of them know who you are. You've known him half your life. You two grew up together. You're the daughter his parents never had. They adore you. During the service, they crowd around you, all hit hugs and kisses, making sure you're all right, while I have to stand at the back and watch as a lot of you get to share your grief and mourn together. See ya. Listening to that adorable story of the last time you spoke, your whole story about how he was your very best friend and lit up your life, well, all the while I can't let anyone know how much Chris meant to me without revealing his deepest, darkest secret. Sure you can see how that would sting. Just a little. That's not fair. It wasn't my fault that No! I... No! Of course it's not fair. None of this is fair. It's not your fault that Chris couldn't grow up and tell his family the truth. It's not your fault that they spend the whole funeral calling me Anthony, like they're my primary school teachers telling me off in front of the class. And it's not your fault that Chris's family chose you, the best friend they've known for years, over me, the boyfriend they didn't even know existed, to give the eulogy. But they didn't know. And Chris isn't here. So guess what? Honey, I've got no one to blame but you. Yeah, it's unfair, but life is unfair. And now so am I. How was that then? Make you feel any better? Get it all out of your system? You don't get it. I do! How could you? You're somebody to them, you meant something, I'm fucking nothing. They see you crying and rush over to make sure you're alright. Well, who's going to make sure I'm okay? Not them, they just brush me off to the side so they can focus on the important people. Well, I'm important too! I was important to Chris and he... He was important to me. I know that. Chris knew it too. But what would you have wanted me to do? Out Chris at his own funeral? There's a reason he didn't tell his family, you know. His granddad might have had a heart attack. Good. Priest already here. It didn't save time. Tony! I didn't mean that. I know. I 
understand how you're feeling, Tony. I can't pretend I'm feeling it too, but I get it. I didn't mean to hurt you. I know you didn't. That said, I'm not going to let you blame me for this. It's on Chris's family and it's on Chris himself. What? You mean Mr. Light shone out of his arse from a eulogy? Chris wasn't perfect, you know that. A eulogy is remembering the good stuff about a person. Well, I wouldn't know. Maybe if you'd written your own you could have talked about why Chris wasn't so perfect. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Tony. Yeah, I, I think I heard some of it. Um, uh, are you, are you okay? Should be. <laughs> Don't stand back there, you make my neck hurt. Come round here, take a seat. How, um, how is it? Does it hurt still? Uh, oh, uh, you know, um, uh, on and off. I know. I'm sorry. Don't be. It, it was worth it. You've got to let out your feelings. That's important on a day like this. Yeah. Yeah, I did. After I... Well, Tony found me. And I was proper crying for a good 10, 15 minutes. Eyes red, nose running, all that. And it felt like shit. Rage. I... It felt like shit at first. But, you know what? After that, I actually started feeling a bit better. I let it all out, like you said, instead of bottling it all up. I didn't cry during the funeral. I delivered the whole eulogy without needing a moment or anything. So, I suppose what you did worked. Well... I'm not thanking you, Martin. It wasn't nice. It was manipulative. Rach, I'm... I so sorry, that wasn't what I was trying to do. It was, actually. It was exactly what you were trying to do. Get me to stop pushing down on my feelings, but instead of having a conversation, you basically tricked me into having a breakdown. Uh, I know. I did. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm really sorry. I, you know, I didn't mean any of it. Not a word. I know. But still. Yeah. Yeah. I should just... I I'm sorry, Rach. I'll leave you be now. Um, I'll see you later. I'll message Tony about Martin, the Martin! Stop it! Look, you running off is not going to help. 
help anything. You may have screwed up, majorly screwed up. But come on, you're still my friend. I know you were just trying to help. And now that Tony, I mean, today, I just, I don't want to be alone. And what you did, it was wrong and it was shitty and it made me feel awful, but I do know I was being stubborn. You did try and talk me for it and I wouldn't listen. So maybe, just a little bit, it was kind of what I needed. And Chris, well, if you told Chris you were going to say all those awful things about him just to help me get through all this, he'd have told you to go right ahead. Of course he would have. Probably would have offered you some better insults too. So you, you don't want me to? I can if you No, can. no, stay. Besides, I reckon you've suffered enough already today, yeah? Learned your lesson? Won't do it again? Yeah, I, I mean, no, of course not. I'm sorry. So let's just, come on, sit down, let me have a look. Ooh, that is looking well bad. <laughs> Tough. I, I'm okay. It's, it's okay. Really, Rach. You sure? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. All right. All right. Uh, uh, is everything, you know, okay uh, between you and Tony? I, it's just if you want to, I mean, if you want to talk, I, well, I'm here for you, is what I'm trying to say. I'm going to be all right. It's just Tony, he's got some, some shit to work out. Chris's family didn't know the two of them were a couple, so he kind of got all upset when they were all focused on me and pretty much ignoring him. I think he just had to vent a bit. He'll be all right soon enough. At least he didn't hit me, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I get it. I mean... None of Chris's family have really spoken to me either. I could try and talk to Martin, him. Martin, when was the last time you spoke to Chris? <laughs> Sorry? Something Tony said got me thinking. I was lucky. The last time I saw Chris was just lovely. It was sweet and it was wholesome and everything went fine, but it's like I said in my eulogy. If I'd known, known, it was the last time. I don't know. Would have done things differently. Like what? Taking a last photo of the two of us or something, anything, to make it feel special. Rage. Well, it's no good thinking about what you would have done differently. You, you did what you did. Um, I, I know the two of you were friends for years, but I've known. I, I knew Chris. Enough to say that just seeing you, that made it plenty special enough for him. I mean, you said all that great stuff about him in your eulogy, but I bet if he had to make a speech about you, I, I don't mean a eulogy, I mean anything, any kind of speech. He'd have said stuff that was just as nice, better even. He loved you, Rach, just as much as you loved him, as you love him. I mean, thank you. <laughs> it's all right. How'd you get to be so bloody wise, anyway, Martin? <laughs> what? Did you score off a life advice to GCSE or something? <laughs> you know, you you think I'm all wise and that, but um. You wanted to know the last time I spoke to Chris? I was actually asking for his advice. With, uh, uh, with a girl. You are asking for Chris's advice with a girl? Yeah. Why not one of your other mates, those lads you play your, your sport with? You mean the rugby team? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm so bad with 
girls if you had to get help from a boy who's known he was gay since before he hit puberty? Um, well, actually, it's because uh, it's it was a girl Chris knew. What? Someone from our lit module? Yeah, one of them. Well, go on then, tell me who it is. <sighs> Come on. It's like I said to Tony. Chris may be gone, but that just means we have to be there for each other even more. So, if you're not going to tell me who this girl is, at least tell me about her. Here, let me settle in. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me why you like this girl, and I'll see if I can offer you any advice. I do have some idea what it's like being a girl, you know. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, this girl is beautiful. Just beautiful. I, I haven't had that many chances to speak to her one to one, like, but I've seen her around, you know, hung out with her in uh, uh, classes and that. Well, go on then, what's she like? Uh, she's kind uh, and friendly and. Uh, are you sure you're comfy there, Rach? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're all way better size of this than Tony. <laughs> he's all bony and he's too tall. Oh, uh, ta. <laughs> <laughs> Well, go on then. Stop with all the pauses. Tell me more. Is she geeky, sporty, shy, noisy? She's thoughtful, selfless, caring. Uh, and she's bloody tough, yeah, athletic, but uh, she could probably beat me in an arm wrestle. <laughs> Why is she on steroids? Look at you, you're built like a bloody tank. I'm actually only five foot five. All this is just pedal. <laughs> <laughs> Hiya, God. Uh, it's, it's me, Martin. Um, uh, to be honest, and you know, I, I figure if there's one person I shouldn't lie to, it's probably you. Well, to be honest, I'm not really sure that you exist. I, I mean, I think the idea of you is grand and all. Uh, Mum says you give us strength and courage and wisdom. Uh, and Dad says I should thank you every time I score a try. Uh, and I thought I heard your voice at my confirmation. But uh, it might have just been an echo. But anyway, none of that's why I'm talking to you now. Uh, it's about my friend, uh, Chris. Not long ago, he, he died. You probably know. Uh, and we miss him. Of course we do. You should see how sad everybody is down here. So many people, all bawling their eyes out. That's how great Chris was. I suppose, anyway. I, I mean, I've only known him for... I had only known him a few months. Well, and it's because Chris was so great that I wanted to ask you, God, for a favour? Even though I've hardly done nothing for you and you've helped me win all those games, I, I, I give it all back. Yeah, every trophy, every cup, all of it. If you just do this one thing for me. 
see, Chris was a good lad, one of the best. Sure, he could be a bit too fussy and a bit too neat, but that's only because he cared so bloody much. So, I want you, God, if you're up there, if you're listening, make sure he gets to heaven. You hear me? Make sure he gets to paradise, where he can spend all day colour coordinating his socks, or reading Shakespeare with Shakespeare, or whatever it is he wants. Because he deserves it all. I, I may not have known him as long as Rach, or, or as well as Tony, but I knew enough to see that if any of us deserve infinite happiness, it was Chris. He was such a good lad. It, in fact, he was so kind and generous and good, he, he didn't deserve to die at all. If things were fair, Chris would have lived a long and happy life, longer and happier than any of the rest of us. He'd have got married, had kids, died old and rich in his bed. Not young and suddenly on a random fucking street corner. And I'm sorry for swearing, God, I am. But I just don't understand why. I don't understand why you, you who are meant to guide and protect and love us all, would let someone like Chris die so young. So I guess, as it turns out, I really hope you don't exist. Because if you do, if you're real and you just sat there and did nothing as my friend died, if you're not any god I want to thank or, or worship, you're just a bastard. And you don't deserve our love or our thanks for anything. You can strike me down for saying that, send me to hell, whatever you do, I, I don't care. Because whether or not Chris is in heaven, whether or not there's an afterlife at all, all I care about is the fact that he's gone. He can't be with his best friend. He can't be with his boyfriend. He's gone. And that's on you. So, you know, get your shit together and do your fucking job. <laughs> Rage, I, you, her. I, I was just, um, well, I, I, I thought it might, um, I, 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 I I, the, I, the, I grass, I didn't want to get grass stains, these trousers. <laughs> Here I am. I got you this. Oh, uh, right, I'll, I'll just do that now. twice your size, then gone out to the pub with them afterwards. You're a good friend, Martin. <laughs> Got no idea who this girl is you're asking Chris about, but I do know she'd be lucky to date you. Oh. <laughs> I mean it. You're a great guy, Martin. Don't ever doubt that. You... You reckon I should go for it? <laughs> of course, go for it. Right. All right, I... I will. I'll go for it. I will go for it. <laughs> go for it. 
um, rich. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, the girl I, I was uh, uh, talking to Chris about. Um, yeah? I, I figure I could. Uh, well, uh, I mean, I reckon I should probably. Uh, I mean, if you still want to know, I could. Uh, um, I mean, I could tell you. That I probably. Um, uh, well, you see, the thing is. Um, uh, fuck it. Uh, sorry. Uh, I mean. It's. It, it's me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, after a while, I, I've liked you, and I wasn't going to say anything because we were working together, and I, I didn't want to mess things up or, or screw with the group dynamic. And, but, but then all this happened, and, and you said I should just, yeah, just go for it. So, yeah, that's um, that, that's what I'm saying. I'm sorry. I'm rambling. I, I said, fuck it. I can't believe it. Oh. Martin, that was well sweet of you to say that, but I'm really sorry, given everything that's happened, given where we are right now, I just, I can't give you the answer you want. Oh. Or any answer, this just, this isn't the place. And it isn't the time. Yeah, I understand. I mean, my best friend's funeral is not the place to decide whether to get into a new relationship. Oh, you're right. I, I'm sorry. I should have waited. I, I was going to wait till after the project. Yeah. <laughs> you probably should have. Sorry. Look, I get why you felt out of place back there, what with everyone having known Chris for years and all, but. That doesn't mean it's your job to try and cheer me and Tony up or make this into a, a, a happy day. Because, as I'm sure you've noticed, it's absolutely fucking not. Uh, I just want to make you guys feel better. I know. It, it's hard seeing you like this, so if there's anything I think might help, I just... Sometimes there is, and... Sometimes there isn't. Are you trying though? That's why Chris would have wanted you here. At the funeral, I mean. Even in the short time he knew you, he could tell. You're a bloody good friend. Thanks, Rach. Martin. Yeah? Do you know how to waltz? How to what? Waltz, it's a kind of dance, like one of those fancy ones they have. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know how to waltz. Um, well, I, I know the basics anyway. You do? How come? Oh, I, I learned from my sixth form prom. Um, I was dating this girl at the time, Annika. She had these, uh, it's not important. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she wanted to do like a proper waltz, so I practiced this box step thing for weeks. I got well good at it. It's been a while, but I could probably still have a go. Why did you remember? Look at you, a man of hidden talents. What else have you been hiding? Oh, um, well, I also speak sign language, uh, and I'm like weirdly good at Scrabble. So cool, can you show me a bit? Oh, I don't know where you find a board around here. <laughs> sign language. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, right. Uh, of course. Sure, um, hello. Nice to meet you. The weather today is sunny. Shakespeare is bullshit. <laughs> Your dress is lovely. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have. Nah, it's okay. All right. Um, Martin, I was thinking, how would you like to come to the hockey team dance with me? With, uh, with you? Yeah. Not as my date. I didn't mean it like that. More just, you know, as friends. Oh, right. And we can see how that goes? Of course. I'd, I'd love to. Thanks, Rach. All right, then. It's, um, it's next week, on the 23rd. I'll send you all the details later. Yeah, sure. No problem. Is, uh, is there, like, a costume theme or anything? More of a dress code. Uh, 
black tie for the boys, dresses for the girls. Right. But don't worry, I already know you look nice in a suit. Uh, thanks, and um, your dress, I know you, uh, you're you gonna... <laughs> oh, I'm shit at this! <laughs> what? Did that Annika not give you enough practice? Uh, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm only teasing. Now, still haven't picked out a dress yet? You any good with women's fashion, Martin? Shame. I'll have to get Tony to come with me. Well, that's the cue if I've ever heard one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'd hate to interrupt. Sounds like you two having a grand old time, really finding the funny side of your friend's funeral. Don't be like that, Tony. We were just... Oh, I know. Just having some fun talking about the hockey team social, which I'm sure will be a lovely evening. Of course I'll help you pick out a dress. You want to look your best while you're dancing your troubles away. Tony, I'm so... I... No. I shouldn't have... Stop, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean that. Any of that is. It was a knee-jerk reaction, and this... This was going to help me get all that out. Put it down on paper. Not paper. Not the paper. I'm sorry. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, tell me, wh what is that on your phone? Oh, it's silly, I... Well, I wrote something. For Chris. Like a eulogy? Yeah. Not actually going to read it, though. It was just so I could vent a bit, you know, get all the anger and bitterness and frustration and put it down on paper. Not the point. Um, I'm sorry, but, yeah. I wrote it kind of like a eulogy. Well... Why don't you read it? You know, I figured most people are headed home by now during the actual funeral's over, but I'm sure if I call Chris's dad, no, I didn't mean it like he that. He meant you could read it to us, you twat. <laughs> All right. You two want to hear it? Love that you're already finishing each other's sentences, by the way. Oh, it's just adorable. I am here to talk about the one, the only Chris Darnell. He and I, as I'm sure many of you know, well, all of us. <laughs> Our whirlwind courtship started with a meeting of eyes through a dorm room window, followed by several months of awkward hand-holding, pale, gangly sex, and trying to help him overcome his ridiculous Manchester accent. <laughs> Twats, a pair of you. Now, people have said a lot of good things about Chris. All of them true. But in the interest of honesty and fairness, I think it's important we lay out some of his flaws as well. And I don't just mean the accent. No. It got much worse than that. Chris drooled in his sleep. He was obsessively tidy, but always denied being a control freak. He'd get this little pout and turn away and then have to change the subject. He said Ian e. Forster was, quote, overrated and self-indulgent. And honestly, I'm shocked. I didn't dump him then and there. But worst of all, he had this maddening, beautiful, infuriating, endless desire to please other people. He'd always say, it was my choice what takeaway we ordered, what movie we watched, even his room we spent the night in. Oh, the bastard. He was so focused on making me happy, it stopped him ever making a decision or asserting any preference of his own. And he was so afraid of confrontation or making people unhappy that he'd make himself miserable. He never thought about how it would hurt the people around him. The people who loved him. To watch him wearing himself down to the bone to help someone who, let's be honest, could have proofread their own bloody essay. And he'd lie as well. White lies. We'd, we'd been dating two months when he told me he couldn't stand the uni cafeteria food where we first met, and I assumed he'd liked it too, but he suffered through so that we, he wouldn't burst my sentimental little bubble. And then there were the people he liked to the most. His family. He told them he was loving all his modules. He told them he didn't drink. He was so afraid of disappointing them that he could never let them know he'd done something wrong. His big brother had done everything they ever wanted. Career, degree, wife, kids, 
and they expected the exact same from their little saint of a younger son. So how could he let them down? He couldn't tell them he showed up to the poetry exam 45 minutes late and hung over. He couldn't tell them he wanted to be a freelance theatre critic, so no stable employment and no time or money for kids. And he definitely couldn't tell them why he still hadn't kissed a girl by the age 20. Not because he was shy, or because girls are age and terrible taste in men, but because he developed a taste for cock at 15 and never looked back. And it made him miserable. It made him fucking miserable, not being able to be himself around the people who raised him and loved him and made him perfectly round pancakes for breakfast. I understood at first, you know, the way my family reacted when I told them if Chris's or anything like that, I told him I could understand him wanting to stay in the closet forever. But that wasn't it, he said. His parents were good people. They'd never kick him out, disown him, tell him he was no longer their son. They'd just be disappointed, sad that they'd never get to meet his wife or kids, biological ones anyway. Sad their dream of a perfect little family would go down the shitter if they found out their son was gay. And when he told me that, it hurt. It fucking hurt. And it wasn't fair. But just because Chris was scared of having a difficult conversation, we had to hide. No photos, no posts. I had to avoid him the whole weekend his parents came to visit because he just couldn't bear to disappoint them. And the thing is that... The thing is I didn't care. I didn't. I would have put up with all of it. I didn't care that he was a white lion, people-pleasing, control freak who enabled his parents' heteronormative, traditional bullshit. Because he was Chris. He was kind and clever and generous and I, I would have done anything to stay with him. I would have worn a wig and a dress and called myself an heir if I could meet his family, if it meant building a life with him. Because I adored him. I loved him. And now I just don't know what I'll... That's what people usually say, isn't it? I don't know what I'll do without them. I hear it all the time in eulogies, memorials and all that. It's what I have written down, but it, it's not true, is it? I know exactly what I'll do without Chris. We all do. We'll study, do assignments, take exams, or make new friends, go out drinking, spend time with them. We'll have fun. We'll graduate, find jobs, careers if we're lucky, places to live. I'll meet someone new. Because I have to. We all have to carry on with our lives. Even when we don't want to, even when it feels like everything is breaking down, the world will stop turning and nothing will ever feel good or fun or light again. We have to, and I... I don't want to. But as much as I hate it, and as much as I hate myself for it, time will not stop or slow down just for me. I have to go on and live the rest of my life, because whatever life I could have had with Chris, it was smashed by that fucking car, and now it's buried. Over there, in a fucking wooden box, and I'll never know how... How long... Whether we... I just wish there was someone to blame him. 
the driver or Chris or me, anyone that I could just point this, anchor this fucking toxic rage and let it out. I know, I know. Sometimes it's nobody's fault. It's just life or the universe, whatever you want to call it. God. I have bloody hope not. Anyway, the point isn't who you let it out on. It. It's just that you let it out at all. You get this anger and this grief out in the open. Although, it's good you didn't let it out on Martin's face like I did. Of course, Chris wasn't some perfect angel. We all loved him. We, we love him. Even with all of his flaws. Sometimes it's just easier to remember someone as being perfect, you know, because... Yeah, nobody wants to say bad stuff about someone who's died. I mean, sometimes it seems like it, it'd be easy to think badly of someone because then you don't miss them as much if you can pretend you never really liked them to begin with. But that's the same, I mean, that's just as bad as pretending that, you know, it's just pretending that someone was perfect. Either way, you're not dealing with how you really feel. Thanks, honey. So glad you've decided to drop English and start working on your psychology degree. Since when did miss you don't deserve to say his fucking name and get so wise anyway? I took life advice as a GCSE. <laughs> Okay. Well, clearly, you two have some inside jokes that I'm not privy to. So, grateful as I am for your help dealing with the all the shit I have bottled up, I'm going to have to ask you kindly to both fuck off. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, I've got grass stains all down my trousers. And I bet they're on my bloody sleeves, too. You dressed them on your dress? Oh, bloody hell! And your trousers, I hope that's not a rental. It is, I'm screwed. <laughs> this is the worst funeral ever. Oh no, no. I'm a terrible teacher, mate. I couldn't teach a dog to shit. Go ahead, Professor. Do you remember any of what I taught you earlier? I remember how you stand. And the beat is one, two, three, four, one. No, 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 no. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Right, right. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now you've got the hang of counting to three. <laughs> How about the box tap? Right. Goes like this. I'm leading, remember? Yeah. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So because you're following, you'll go back, left together, forward, right together. Okay? Back. Left together, forward, right together. Can you show me? Back, left together, forward, right together. Perfect. All right, let's try it together. Back, left together, forward, right together. Get out! Sorry, out. sorry, out. you're all right. I'm fine. Tree trunks, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Come on, let's try it again. Look down if you need to, and remember you're doing the opposite of what I'm doing, okay? Back, left, together, forward, right, together. Good, All right, again. Back, left, together, forward, right, together. Back, left, together, forward, right, together. I think I'm getting it. Thank you, Chris. Tony. You definitely are. Okay. Do you think you're ready to do it without me talking at all? You nor 
not talking, that'll be the day. Just don't step on my foot again. Right, sorry. this dance. You may. 